comments from my power director peeps? I hope y'all ready for this. Hey Power Director Peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love from PowerDirectorUniversity.com. Today we're going to be taking some questions from my Power Director Peeps and answering those questions right here on the channel. So let's go ahead and jump off into those questions and get it cracking. The first question is from Rock Sapien who asked, hey, when I was trying to load up some photos for the time lapse, it would not let me go past 2,500 photos. It told me that was the limit. Is there a way around this if you have a long time lapse? All righty, Rock Sapien. You know I got your back, so here's what you should do. The media library can only hold up to 2,500 assets at a time. It doesn't matter if it's pictures, videos, sound, it can only hold 2,500 assets. But the timeline can hold as many assets on it as you want. So you gotta have to do a little work around to get things done. So what you wanna do first is import your 2,500 files. And let's just say, uh, there's not 2,500 here, but let's say there is. So we import all of these pictures for a time-lapse. Then we go ahead and drag all of these photos into the timeline. All right, so we got our first batch of 2,500 photos in the timeline. The media library can't hold anything else. So what we do is empty that. We go to empty the library. And then we want to import the rest or the next 2,500 assets. And let's say this is our next set of 2,500 photos that we need to do. Those are now in the media library, so we go ahead and move all of these bad boys to the timeline. And we just keep it rolling, keep it moving till all of those files are in the timeline, ready for us to create our time lapse. You know I got your back, Roxapien. The next comment is from Old Drippy, who said, your puns are funny as hell. So you trying to say I'm punny? Appreciate that, whole Drippy. Appreciate that. The next question is from June or June, who asked, will there be PD-18? Now, June or June, I don't work for Cyberlink, but I'll tell you this. It's a popular program. It's making them a lot of money. I don't see why there wouldn't be a PD-18. Now, unless the world ends, they choose to stop making it for some crazy reason, like maybe they want to go in another direction or something, then I would expect to see Power Director 18 in the future. The next question is from Don Baracho, who asked, can I put my own pick as the menu background? I don't want none of that stock-ish. You need to clean your mouth with a bar of soap, Don Baracho. Little filthy mouth. All right, Don Baracho, with your little nasty mouth, I'm going to help you out, even though you got a dirty mouth. So, if you want to change the background, of course, you got to go up here to create disk. And once you're here, you want to go ahead and click on the menu preferences. Once you're in this section, I really, 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 really recommend, I really, really, really recommend that you select a disk menu that is going to be close to what you want to do because you're going to have to do some modification to it. So let's just say I select this uh, Lunar New Year. And now I'm going to click on Modify. And guess what happens after that? It opens the Menu Designer where I can design the menu and change things. That's how the program works, my friends. So now I'm going to go up here to this little box that says Set Background Image or Video. I'm going to left click on that. And then I'm going to select set background image or video. Once I do, it opens up the file explorer and I can go here wherever I want to, to find myself a nice little photo that I want to use. I think I'm going to use Miss Dandridge. So I clicked on a picture of Dorothy Dandridge and now I get to select how I want to crop letterbox or stretch. And if I want this to apply to all the menus, I could just click on this little box here and it will apply it to all of the menu pages. Then I click on OK. 
And then I have to go ahead and say, all right, this is what I really want. Ooh, look at her. Look at Dorothy. Already, she my background, boo. She my background. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now I can save this as a template. I'm going to call it Dorothy in her honor. And now I have created a template that I can use. And if I click over here on the template I just created with my own unique background, I can click on apply to all pages or apply and booyaka. There you go. Your background's good, Don Baracho, even though you got a little filthy mouth. And the last question is from Drago Lee Productions or Drago Lee Productions, if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I apologize. The question is, so when you add transition, I notice the timeline gets shifted. How can you keep all other clips on the timeline the same? All right, Drago Lee Productions, I'm going to help you out with this little transition issue that you've been having. But before I show you what to do, I'm going to show everybody else exactly what you're referring to. So when you apply a transition to clips in PowerDirector, you have to tell PowerDirector how you want the transition to be applied to the timeline. So if I take this fade transition, I left click on it, drag it down in between two clips. It's going to shift everything over. Bam, just like Drago Lee Productions said it would. And if I take another one and drag it down here, guess what? Bam, everything shifts over. If you don't want it to shift over, then you have to modify the transition before you go ahead and start applying them. Or you could do it after if you just want it to be applicable to one timeline track. So what I mean by that is this. If I click on this transition... I get the option to modify it or I can right click on it and go up here to modify transition. Either one is fine. Now, when you're in this transition setting screen, you get the option to have a transition as overlap. And as you can see with overlap, guess what it does? It makes one go over the other one near the end. If they were up against the edges of one another before, now they're overlapped. If you don't want it to do that, you got to put it on cross. And this keeps them butted up against one another, just like they were when you were editing. So I'm going to click on cross and bam, that timeline track, everything on that track moves up back over where it was before. If I click on the other transition and I click on cross, it's going to do the same thing just for that track. Everything after it, boom, moved it over. So there you go. So that's one way you can go ahead and do that now. Somebody like me, myself, you know, I would rather go ahead and apply the preference that I want before I even start editing. So right now, I'm going to show you that we're still on overlap. So if I drag this down here, place it in between these two, boom, everything still shifts over. You can change that in your preferences. So if I go up here, go to preferences, click on that, go to the editing tab. And here, the first thing here under timeline, it says set default transition behavior. Right now it's all overlap. I'm gonna change it to cross. I'm gonna click on okay. And now when I apply this transition in between these two clips, nothing moves. Drago Lee Productions, you're welcome. All right, Power Director peeps, that's it. End of the comments, we're done. Now, I wanna thank you guys for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. If you have any tutorial requests for me, make sure you go to the video description and complete my tutorial request form. If you want to have more learning tips and tricks on PowerDirector, make sure that you watch more of my content on PowerDirector University. Now, if you want to be notified every time I upload content to YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and then click on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.